Hello, OAS family. We are we have some exciting news and some exciting things to show off today. We are going to be demonstrating three new brushes, brand new brushes. They're limited edition brushes, and they uh, have kind of cool, unique purposes and uses. So uh, we're going to get right into it. So the first uh, brushes we want to talk about are these new whisker brushes. Okay, so there are there they come in two sizes. So the larger one we're calling the regular size, and the smaller one we're calling the small size. Okay, so these are the two whisker brushes. Now, as you can tell by the shape, these are good for fine lines, tapering lines, curving lines. You can see that they have a kind of a longer, narrow body, which also makes them good for moisture control because the less body a brush has, the less moisture it's gonna hold. And so if you have difficult times controlling your moisture, these brushes will help out because they just have fewer hairs to sort of soak up the water. So whenever we introduce a new brush, I always sort of like to compare it to a brush that we've had for a longer time in our catalog. So if you can see here, this is our leaf vein brush. All right, so you can see that these two brushes, the whisker brushes, are kind of in the same family as the, the, the leaf vein. They have the same sort of profile as far as body shape, but they are definitely smaller brushes than the leaf vein, so they will give you more control, right? So those are the whisker brushes. And then, very, very exciting, this new brush we are calling the twig brush, okay? So you can see here it's a combination brush, but it's got sort of a shorter, full body. So if you were to compare it, for example, to our flow brush, a lot of you have flow brushes. So you can see how the flow brush is sort of longer, right? But it has about the same body width. And we will talk about why this is sort of advantageous to having a brush like this. I mean, the bottom line basically is that it's gonna give you more control. It's gonna hold less moisture and a lot of people, including myself, like to use these combination brushes for painting what we call bone strokes, you know, these sort of thicker line strokes. And having a shorter bodied brush, shorter full bodied brush like this has some advantages because it can, it can help you apply a very consistent amount of pressure to these bone strokes. So it'll get you a straighter line and a line that uh, looks more even and more consistent as you paint. So we're gonna do some stroke demonstration and we're gonna also show these brushes uh, in action in a very simple composition, all right? So I hope you're excited for that. It's coming right up. All right, so here we are. We're going to demonstrate this is the regular size twig brush, okay? And I'm just gonna use a little bit of ink and show you kind of from a stroke standpoint what it's like to use this brush. So you can see on this brush, we have like a very, very narrow tip. So it's very, very uh, capable of doing smaller fine lines. And if I load the brush a little bit deeper, I can get those lines to taper a bit, okay? So if I just sort of lay into the brush and then release it. Now I'm using our practice Schwinn, which is a single Schwinn, which means that this paper is fairly moisture sensitive. And so you can see how dry I'm able to paint. You know, I'm getting textures as I'm painting and I'm not getting bleeding. So you can see here that, that, that this narrow body of the brush is really serving me in this instance. Now, it also has a very clever tip. It has a long tip, so if I want things to curve, like if I want to do sort of vine or tendrils, you can see here that I'm able to do that. I can turn these strokes and make those lines curve. So this is a very, very useful brush to have in your arsenal. As far as the small size of, of these brushes go, you can see here I, I can even do them to do some of these sort of tapering, kind of narrow leaves. Um, these are kind of reminiscent of string beans almost. 
okay? And you can see that even if I lay into the brush a little bit, I'm still not getting very many issues with a lot of bleeding, a lot of moisture. All right, so that is the twig brush, okay? And we'll also show this uh, uh, brush in action in more of a final composition, so stay tuned for that. But the next uh, thing, and we also have it in two sizes, so I was showing you the larger size, but there's also a smaller size, so if you want even more control, uh, we do have a smaller size available. So we're gonna change out our paper here. And then we're gonna show off the twig brush. Now I'm really, really excited about this brush in particular. So first of all, the brush is a combination brush. So like the flow brush, it has some uh, versatility to it. It's not just good at, at this um, sort of uh, secret weapon trick that I'm gonna show you, but it's got, um, you know, you can do these sort of tapering strokes, you know, these like uh, orchid leaf strokes. Now, usually we would use a brush like a happy dot for this, but you can see because this brush has kind of a shorter body, it almost acts a little bit like a stiffer brush than it actually is. So it has these combination hairs that are soft. So the tip itself is very clever. You can see I can, I can turn the strokes and I'm still getting um, you know, nice shapes as I turn them. So as a general combination brush, it has uh, a unique size. So it's in between, size-wise, it's in between um, our flow brush and our mini flow brush. It's got the same width as the flow. But what I, what, what's really exciting about this brush is its ability to do what I would call like bone strokes. You know, these are the types of strokes that we use for trunks and stems. So you can see here, as I do these strokes, I'm getting a more consistent line throughout these strokes. The, the trick about, the hard thing about doing bone strokes is the variable amount of pressure that you can apply, especially if the brush is longer. So you can see that because this is a shorter brush, it has only so much pressure that can be applied. It, it eventually stops you because the brush just runs out of body. And because of that, you know, it's, it's a little bit like the Biff that way where you can use it to consistently do these strokes, which a lot of people, including myself, find pretty challenging. Um, so I really like this brush. It's exciting to finish off, you know, if you're doing a flower stem or you're doing a smaller, uh, you know, like a plum branch or, or whatnot, these, the ability to kind of do these uh, um, line strokes, these bone strokes, these branch strokes with more consistency kind of justifies having this brush around as, as kind of a secret, secret weapon brush, much like we have seen that the Biff brush is good for painting the bamboo trunks. All right, so that's the twig brush uh, uh, and the whisker brush uh, in action as far as what they can do stroke-wise and stay tuned. Uh, you, we will be featuring my mother using them in a final composition next. Okay. So uh, today we're going to demonstrate the um, new twig brush and um, the whisker brush, regular size. And um, both brush has a special char character of these brushes is that they all have a sharp point. So for people who have no trouble uh, with the moisture control, they tend to paint too wet and runs too much. And, and I would highly recommend to give it a try. So we have a very simple composition today. I'm using the um, OAS practice run, the small size, and the companion set, small companion set watercolor, as well as the large iridescent um, color. I'm loading the twig brush with uh, the companion set brown 
and then soften it up with a little black on the side to do the branches on the top. And then I dip the ink and now I use the ink to add the texture to the to the branch. And then I'm going to use the whisker brush. I used the green in the companion set and dipped a little bit with the yellow mixing. And then I used the brown to soften it up. So. Then I'm going to use the uh, twig brush to do the butterfly. And I load the twig brush with yellow. Tip with the black. And soften. And I used the uh, um, whisker brush to do the body of the butterfly. So I dip into the ink. And then I use the whisper brush. Now I dip into vermilion and red to accent a little flower on the, the bottom of the texture. Then I use the whisker brush again, dip into the iridescent watercolor set with the blue.
Now I add a little bit dot with the black. Now I'm going to use the whisker brush and dip to the green, yellow, a little brown to add some leaves to the upper twig. Okay. 